hello everyone and thank you for joining us for our AWS and Tableau Powerful Pairings webcast. Quick introductions, my name is Emily Dentinger. I'm a data and analytics consultant here at Thoroughgood. I'm based in our Philadelphia office. And I'm joined by my colleague, John Miller, also a data and analytics consultant and also based out of our Philadelphia office. Again, thank you everyone for joining. We've put together some, what we would deem interesting content. So we're excited to share this webcast with you. Quick agenda for today. We'll start with just an introduction to the powerful pairing series. And then we'll move into solo acts. So we'll talk a little bit about AWS and then a little bit about Tableau, um, just how they exist individually. We then have a business case and two corresponding demos, one in AWS and one in Tableau. Spoiler, they, they kind of blend nicely together. Then we'll close out with some thoughts, considerations, and really the why of this powerful pairing. We then have one or two closing slides just to wrap everything up. All right, so we'll start with the powerful pairing series. And, and really powerful pairings is a series of webcasts that we run at Thoroughgood in which we discuss how two or more different technologies can be utilized together. In this series, we discuss key features of each tool and explain real examples of how we've used the combination of individual tools to solve complex business problems. In the past, we've done a number of webcasts like this one focused on technologies being paired powerfully together, such as Tableau and Microsoft Azure. We've done an Anaplan Azure and Power BI webcast. We've done a, some content around Tableau and Databricks. This is just to kind of name a few of, of uh, recent events that we've run. You can probably tell from the examples, but in this series, we typically pair a warehousing or back-end database cloud technology with a front-end reporting tool to provide a full end-to-end -end view of how these tools can interact, much like we have in this webcast, pairing AWS and Tableau together. And we, we being Thoroughgood, are in a really unique position to identify these powerful pairings because of what we do and how we operate. And that's actually a, a pretty nice segue into a quick introduction to Thoroughgood. So Thoroughgood is an independent global professional services firm specializing in data and analytics strategies, solutions, and services, always with a focus on our customers. We are a global company. We have offices in Boston, Philadelphia, London, India, Singapore, and Sao Paulo, Brazil. We offer a full range of data and analytics services, including strategy and roadmaps, application design and development, planning and business modeling, training and adoption, maintenance and support, pretty much the full spectrum of data and analytics services. We are an independent consultancy in that we're not tied to one specific technology. And again, this is very helpful when it comes to us identifying these powerful pairings of technologies. We, we have a very holistic view of, of the industry, of the space, of the tools and technologies available. So our approach when, when we work with clients, we take time to understand the business problem and the organization that we're working with. And from there, we shape an approach that, leverage, that leverages the best fit in technology. We serve some of the biggest companies in the world and are in recent times helping them to define their strategy around digital transformation. A lot of this focusing around movement to the cloud, expansion in the cloud, multi-cloud strategies. Typically, we work with organizations across one of four verticals, those being consumer goods and manufacturing, pharmaceutical and life sciences, retail banking and capital markets and insurance. These industries just tend to be very data rich, but we are by no means limited to these industries. So we're gonna quickly dive into solo acts. So quick introduction to AWS, quick introduction to Tableau. So we'll start with AWS. AWS is a cloud solutions provider. And really, as we can see from this Gartner magic quadrant on our left, this is, this is a quadrant titled platform as a service capabilities. So, or, or I should say for cloud infrastructure and platform services. So as we can see, AWS is is really both a leader and a visionary in this space. The top three being AWS, Microsoft, and, and Google's cloud platform. But we can really see that AWS is one of the key players in this cloud infrastructure and platform service realm. 
I guess one of the many contributing factors to this is AWS's global footprint. They have regions across six continents. In addition to those regions, they have 77 availability zones, over 210 ed edge locations. So they're a very global, well-known, trusted cloud provider. A little bit of more about AWS. So as a cloud provider and as an infrastructure and platform as a service provider, AWS has a whole range of services and offerings reaching from development to storage. So S3, Glacier, these terms might sound familiar. There are database capabilities within AWS. You can store large quantities of data within the AWS cloud. One of the key features, actually, if you can see my mouse, the AI capabilities embedded within the AWS cloud services. Really interesting here, AWS has essentially packaged up quite a few of the algorithms that Amazon has developed and AWS users or, or consumers can essentially just leverage those algorithms, which is an extremely nice and helpful feature. There are also numerous analytics tools and services within the AWS cloud, including Athena, which allows kind of native SQL querying into S3 storage objects. We have Glue, which is a pretty robust ETL service, QuickSight, a, a visualization tool within the cloud. All of these are, again, con contributing to the analytics capabilities within AWS. Just two other things to call out. The security features, very robust identity and access management features within AWS. And in terms of management, many services designed to cohesively manage your organization's cloud infrastructure. So monitoring, notifications, pricing, billing, all of that is, is uh, well served from the AWS platform. And just one final slide here on AWS. The AWS Management Console, this is essentially the interface into the AWS cloud. We'll take a look at this a little bit later during the demo, but essentially it's a browser-based interface where you can access all of the AWS services, all of your AWS objects. You can create new identity and access management roles, new security features. You can track your billing. It's, re it's really just your interface into the cloud with, uh, with AWS. All right, at this point, I'll transition over to Tableau. Some of you might be familiar with Tableau. Some of you might be very familiar with Tableau, but we'll just kind of level set here. So Tableau is a visualization tool. Generally, we see companies will have a pretty robust system of data engineering, data migration, and then surface all of those insights within Tableau. So a few different products within the Tableau product suite, we have Tableau Desktop, which is a version of Tableau that sits on your local machine and enables you to quickly create visualizations to get insight from your data. We have Tableau Server, which is a web-based platform that allows user collaboration and sharing of data. Tableau Online is a software as a service version of Tableau server that is maintained by Tableau in the cloud. Tableau Prep, this is a newer tool slash service from Tableau, and it's a data manipulation tool that it enables you to do quick and easy data transformations in a really kind of point and click drag and drop interface. And the final product here is Tableau Mobile, which is essentially a mobile app on your phone so you can consume reports that have been created in Tableau. Here's a high level flow of data using Tableau. So we'll start with our data sources in, in this particular powerful pairing with AWS. We're most interested in this cloud-based data source. So Tableau has native connectors that allow you to connect to, to various services within the AWS cloud suite, Amazon Athena being one of those services that we'll see a little bit later. So once you connect to your data sources, the majority of your development in Tableau Desktop, generally best practice, that's what we do. We develop within Tableau Desktop. And from there, we can push our reports and share them via Tableau Server, Tableau Online, or Tableau Mobile. It is worth mentioning that Tableau is owned by Salesforce. So again, just kind of key player and very robust capabilities as it is owned by people who, who know and understand data. All right, so those were kind of quick introductions to the individual products. It's probably most useful in this powerful pairings webcast to play on what that pairing actually looks like and how you can use each tool to its kind of full capability and build a robust solution using these two tools. So what we've done, we've identified a sample 
business use case. This is just hypothetical, but this business use case requires a solution that pulls on both AWS capabilities and Tableau capabilities. So a quick introduction to this business case. Again, this is hypothetical business use case, and it is centered around kind of sustainability topics and, and interest in sustainability. We have been approached by a consumer goods company that would like to monitor social media sentiment pertaining to sustainability and essentially identify trending sustainability related topics. This data and this insight will help to guide marketing initiatives. It will help feed back into SKU rationalization decision making. So which products do we want to keep based on these trending topics? And lastly, it will inform product labeling decisions. So how can we label products that kind of play into these trending topics and that appeal to a wide group of people. So that's kind of the premise here. Lacking the expertise in-house to build this quickly, this consumer goods company turned to Thoroughgood for help putting together a proof of concept to take to higher management. So just some considerations for this specific case. This is an AWS centric company and the intended audience is a business focused group. So it's not data scientists that we're ultimately presenting this this data to its management, its business analysts. So for this proof of concept, I have this little diagram over here on the right side of the screen. There are a few things that that we need to do. We need to connect to social media data. We need to extract information from that social media data and analyze sentiment. And then we need to surface those insights. We need to be able to present that information in a way that's useful for the end user. So what we've done We've designed a project flow and a, a general approach that, that we're going to take to best serve the customer. So a few key steps to this. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to spin up a dedicated EC2 instance. And this is essentially just the computing power that we need to to kind of run these, these different services. On top of that computing power, we're going to pull in tweets. This is going to be a live stream and we can filter those tweets based on well, based on a few things, but we particularly want to pull in tweets that have the word or the term sustainability or sustainable. So once we pull in those tweets and we can kind of follow along with this diagram here, we're going to drop them into a data stream. And this data stream is ultimately going to move these tweets to a storage location in an S3 bucket. But in that process of migrating that data, we're actually going to analyze the sentiment of those tweets. And we're, again, kind of doing this midstream. We've built this Lambda function right into our data stream. So as we're, as we're moving those tweets, we're applying some sentiment analysis on them. Once those analyzed tweets kind of land in our S3 bucket, we're going to query into that bucket using Amazon Athena. And from there, we can actually build a Tableau report to more robustly visualize that data. So this is the general stream. I'm going to flip over to my next slide. We kind of have this diagram just like zoomed in a bit. So it's a little bit more clear. At this point, I'm going to toggle over to my browser and kind of walk through these steps ind individually. I'm going to do my best to refer back to this screen just so it's clear where in the process we are. But what we're going to do now is essentially just walk through these different components. So before I switch over to my browser, just a reminder, we're going to start with this Amazon EC2 instance with a little script on top of it that's essentially going to pull in tweets. So let me switch over to my browser. I'm in my AWS Management Console portal right now, but essentially this is the, the browser interface for AWS. So what I have here is my EC2 instance pulled up. There's really nothing super interesting about, about this EC2 instance. I've just provisioned a, a certain amount of computing power to run this process. So my instance state is running. I've named this EC2 instance Twitter consumer. And I could just go down and, and kind of point out various like security features like auto shut off, anything configuration wise, that's that's all going to be done here. On top of this EC2 instance, we have a Lambda function running and I've named this this Lambda function sustainability Twitter consumer. So what we're doing with this function 
is essentially just pulling in tweets and spoiler, not spoiler, but the, the key here is that we're importing functions from the, the Tweepy library. So there are existing functions that will help us pull in those tweets. So from our perspective, relatively low code. This is, what do we see, 42 lines of code. Nothing, nothing too extensive here. But key points of what's happening, I've identified my delivery stream, and this is a pre-created, I've created this delivery stream in Amazon Kinesis. I've named it long name, but sustainability sentiment delivery stream. And once I've once I've created that stream, what we're going to do here is set up this basic listener that really is just going to print received tweets and then put them into my stream. That's what we're doing here. If I look down a little bit farther in the script, we can see that I'm filtering on sustainability and sustainable. So we're only pulling in tweets with those terms. And, and just to kind of show you what that delivery stream setup looks like, this is my sustainability sentiment delivery stream. It's an Amazon Kinesis service. This is specifically Amazon Kinesis data firehose, which is kind of a subset of Kinesis dedicated towards streaming data. Really what we're doing with this, with this data stream is, well, we have two things. One, we're going to put those tweets into a destination and that destination is an is an S3 bucket. So we've predefined the streaming data Twitter S3 bucket. So midstream, we have this Lambda function that's that's calling on Amazon Comprehend to analyze the sentiment of those tweets. So we're back at, at my data stream and we can see this Lambda function right here, tweet sustainability process Lambda. So that's kind of built into my, my data stream and we can just take a look at that function real quick. There are a few things I wanna call out here. What we're doing with this function, we're calling on Amazon Comprehend and that's happening right here. Comprehend is a is an existing library that, that Amazon has created for the specific reason of analyzing sentiment. There's some some other uses as well, but essentially it's an existing function that we can just readily use and write into our code. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna rate a tweet based on how it interprets the sentiment. So completely positive tweet will get a score of one, completely negative will get a score of zero. So that's essentially what we're doing with this function. We're using that, that built-in AI capability. So that's happening here. And again, this Amazon Kinesis data firehose is dropping those analyzed tweets into Amazon S3. And from there, we can query into that bucket using Amazon Athena. And this is kind of the final stage in AWS. So just bear with me. So within Amazon Athena, it kind of has a familiar like SQL Esque interface. I mean, it, it runs on standard T SQL. So what I've done, I've just selected everything from my Twitter sentiment table, so I can see what what tweets are coming coming in. So the data I have available is the message, so the actual tweet, and if I scroll to the right, the location of where that tweet was tweeted. I guess you can say the sentiment score, the date, and the overall sentiment. So was it positive? Was it negative? And at this point, that kind of concludes the AWS section of the demo. So I'm going to hand it over to John to walk us through the Tableau portion of this demo. So like Emily said, this is now the Tableau portion of the demo here. What the business was looking for was to be able to analyze some sustainability tweet sentiment with the process Emily showed. We're able to get all that Twitter data analyze it and put it into the S3 bucket using Amazon Athena. We can then query that S3 bucket directly from Tableau. So in here, you just go in and add your Amazon Athena connection here. We've already done that. Uh, we can see our table in here with all the different data that we're looking to use. I've built out a few different visuals as part of a first draft to get the business some understanding of what can be seen this data and where they might like to expand or, or change their minds thing so individual visuals are built out here and then bring them all together into this dashboard uh, one of the nice parts about using these visualization tools is that it really helps to bring the information together while you could query this in Amazon Athena or SQL or Databricks or some other just querying tool. 
and look at a, a result of tables. Sometimes nice that it helps aggregate this data for you and displays it in an easier to understand way. And the important aspect of that is in this specific use case, it's business users that are going to be looking at this data. It's not going to be people that are going to be able to go into Amazon Athena and query this data. So trying to make data accessible to more people is a, is a big part of data visualization. In our dashboard here, we can see some tweet sentiment. So just an overarching like list of, is it negative, positive, neutral, some keywords and the count of tweets associated with those keywords. Then we have our tweet sentiment over time. And following that, we actually are able to read in the actual Twitter messages and their corresponding sentiment here. In Tableau, it's also very easy to create these filters. So if you want to filter to say only negative review or negative tweets, you can do that and see how the average sentiment score over time changes uh, the total count there in the breakdown of words here. And you can even go further by saying, you know what, I only want to see negative ones that are linked to sustainable. Um, and you can see that everything sort of updates in our chart here. So a very uh, easy way to go through it. And then the next step in our process with Tableau would be to review this with the business and do some iterations with them. I find that the iterative dashboard methodology is a good way to go through and build out dashboards where we can get some business feedback and buy-in to make sure it's a tool that's uh, working for them and something that they're interested in using. There's a quick review of the Tableau dashboard there. Now I'll wrap us up here. So the main goal of this webcast was to demonstrate how AWS and Tableau can work together successfully. As with any decisions in what kind of tooling and software you're planning to use, there are some key questions that you should make sure to consider. Most importantly, what questions are you trying to answer? In our use case, it was identifying trends in Twitter data related to sustainability. It may seem obvious to be thinking about what you're trying to answer, but having a clear question defined is going to help you tremendously in informing your decisions, not only in what tools to use, but how you should structure your data, what data you actually need to be connecting to and bringing in, and what limitations you can foresee. Next, it makes sense to consider what tools you're currently using. For, uh, with, it, with that, it's good to understand if your company is planning to migrate tools as well, just because it doesn't make sense to build a new solution on a tool that's going to be changed and doesn't align with your company's architecture. It's also key to understand what skills exist in your company. In our example, the client has already been using Tableau and they have Tableau developers who are going to be able to support these reports going forward. Making sure you have the right skills available to support the solutions is key to a successful adoption. And finally, keeping a pulse on the market to see what other tools can offer will only help you deliver the best solutions. As cloud providers and data visualization tools continue to enhance their offerings, there may be opportunities to switch tools uh, to close any capability shortcomings. So this is a process that we typically go through with our clients to make informed decisions, and it's been proven to bring successful results. I'd encourage you to definitely reach out to Emily or myself if you have any questions about the tools that you are using. So thank you again for joining us today. Please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, we'd love to connect and learn more about what you're doing. Thank you.